video I'm going to be showing you how to add dimensions to a working drawing. The drawing in front of me here is the drawing of the angle block from the last video. You should have one of these created already and we're going to be adding dimensions to this drawing in this video. The reason we do this is if we wanted to get this block made you don't want the manufacturer measuring your drawing. If that drawing's been photocopied, then it may well not be the right size anymore, and there's no way of knowing other than to put written dimensions or measurements on the drawing. Now, we have to do that in a particular way because it's very important that the same method and the same standard is used by everybody so everyone can understand exactly what is meant. Now, this is quite a simple drawing. It's probably not going to be misinterpreted, but more complex drawings have the potential to cause issues if you can't see clearly which measurement applies to which part. We're going to start by adding a simple dimension to the length here of the block. Now I'm going to put it here rather than at the bottom. There's not a lot of room down here. We don't want to put the dimensions too close to the object. That's a common mistake. We certainly don't want to put it on the object but we want to put it a reasonable distance down from that bottom line there. Um, and we need so, uh, several elements in each dimension. So I'm going to start off, we've still got our lines from where we drew this, our construction lines, and they're going to be quite useful in creating our dimensions. So I'm going to start off by putting a couple of lines in that come down from the block. They don't touch the block. There's a small gap just there but they come down from the block and what these are called extension lines and what they do they show which bit of the drawing the dimension applies to if you just did a, an arrow out here it's not very clear at all what's being dimensioned and then I'm going to add a horizontal line in between those two extension lines just in from the end I've got a nice sharp pencil so my lines are nice and clear the line touches the extension lines at each end, but the extension lines don't touch the object. And notice how far away from the object this dimension line is. Now this is the one that has the arrows on it. So I'm going to draw my arrowheads in. Now they need to be slim and neat and filled in. I hope you can see those on the video. They're really not very big at all. A common mistake people make is to do massive triangles there instead of slim, neat arrows like these. And then we need to put the number on. Now we're working at full scale. Um, so we're going to put the same number on as we used to draw it. If you were working at say half scale, you would still put the real dimension on. Otherwise you would end up with something half the size, of course. So I'm going to write 100. I'm going to write it very neatly in the center of the line, above the line. You might have seen dimensions being done where the line is split and the number sits on the line. Um, that's an uh, American standard. Uh, we're using the ISO standard here. So that is a dimension on our drawing telling us how long it is from that point to that point. The extension lines don't touch the drawing. It's spaced away, neatly drawn with slim neat arrows and the uh, number, the, the actual measurement itself, is above the line in the centre. That's a horizontal dimension. What about a vertical one then? How about the width of the block looking down on it? Well, I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to add in two extension lines. Not touching. My nice sharp pencil. Make them about the same length. Then I'm going to put a vertical line that does touch the extension lines just in from the end. And you can see that's pretty much the same as we did down here. I'll add my arrowheads, slim and neat. Try and make them all the same size if you can. Now, where do we put the number? Well, for the ISO standard that we're using, the number goes here to the left of that vertical line and it reads upwards. So I'm going to write my measurement, which is 45. Nice and neatly 
they are trying to make it the same size as the previous number. Notice that I haven't written millimetres. We don't have to do that because uh, all the dimensions on this drawing are in millimetres and we would say that in the title box. So that's the top view dimensioned. I'm now going to add uh, the rest of the dimensions to the drawing using exactly the same method and then we can have a look at what I've done and how I've laid it out. Before I do that, just it's worth mentioning that I, I've, me I've dimensioned that width 45. I don't have to put that anywhere else, so I don't have to put it there because we know that width now, we know it's 45. Each dimension should only appear once. I don't have to put that 100 down here. I've done it there, that should be enough. So I'm just going to add the measurements that I gave you last time and the drawing will then be fully dimensioned. drawing has all the measurements needed for somebody to go and make that block. You notice I've repeated the dimension here, that's because it's not clear that that is the same height as that, so I've had to put that on just to make sure. Um, each dimension only appears once, that 45 there is the height of the block, whereas that one is the width, and it, we would expect no problems with somebody taking those measurements and making the block for us. And that is the aim of a working drawing, is to avoid any uh, misunderstandings and errors. This is only linear dimensions. In other words, it's distances between two points. Um, there are all kinds of other standards for dimensioning. Circles and uh, radius edges, positions of circles and so on. Uh, but we're not covering that in this video. If you can get your drawing to this standard, that would be a great start. Mm -hmm. 